After the euphoria of those fantastic wins against Tottenham Hotspur and Manchester City, Manchester United found Everton a tougher nut to crack with caretaker boss Duncan Ferguson not even wearing a suit jacket. It's tough. It's Scotsman. Tough. Big tough Scotsman. Uh, it, was, it was quite a good game. I thought you were going to say normal service has resumed for Man United, but you're a little bit politer than that. I mean, uh, after the two wins, great wins, normal service at Old Trafford has resumed. Were they that bad? No, but I, I, again, you know, nothing's changed, in my opinion. Everybody has a different opinion in the game. That's, that's, that's normal. But, you know, I've been quite steadfast with uh, the appointment of Solskjaer and nothing... You know, in terms of he's a nice fella and he's got experience, but this is such a juggernaut of a club and such a big job. He's not the man for the job. Now, what what we saw, and it's not unusual, was a couple of great wins, one against Tottenham and one against United in the Derby, where people, it's black and white, you know. Oh, that, that, well, it's brilliant now. The problem is for United is they've always looked better against teams that, out possess them and then they can play that counter-attack in football against teams that have struggled this year think about Aston Villa at uh, Old Trafford recently think about Everton today and clubs of that like who are going to shut up shop and probably going to have 30 or 40 percent possession most then United don't have that counter-attacking style to play and that's the teams that they've struggled most against and and so you have to figure that out so it, it still was a surprise that Everton were able to go there and, and I think get some points. Bearing in mind, and we discussed this, they, they had no, literally no midfielders fit. Mm. It's a big task to go and put Mason Holgate, uh, put Holgate in the middle of the park with Tom Davis in there, and you know you're stretched to the to the gunnels, and yet you still managed to go to Old Trafford and get a point. So for Ferguson, interim manager, it has been a great couple of games for sure. Yeah, how did you see the goal that was awarded to Everton? Some controversy over the treatment of the arm for well, Calvert-Lewin on uh, De Gea. If we were sitting here in the 1980s, right, there wouldn't have been a discussion about it. Because there wouldn't have been VAR anyway, but there wouldn't have been a discussion about it. But any arm across the goalkeeper now is usually seen as a foul. Uh, I can only presume VAR did not uh, intervene in the, in the goal being chopped off because it didn't see it as clear and obvious, but I think it was a foul if in the modern game where everyone's soft. He, he, not, is, yeah. <laughs> Even Ferguson said yes. so, right? Well, he, listen, I, uh, play, Duncan Ferguson and I are a similar age and we uh, come up through the ranks together at Scotland and I played against him in the Premier League when he was at Everton. And, and listen, there was no one in the Premier League in his era that threw his arms around more and his elbows than Duncan Ferguson. On top of all the good goals he scored, uh, he was a physical, physical player. So he'd expect that from his players at set pieces. Uh, and if he gets away with it like he did today, he gets away with it. Uh, another storyline from the Everton perspective was uh, this strange situation with Moyes Keane. Yeah. Uh, he came on for 17 minutes and was hauled off for Umar Nias as uh, Ferguson was asked about it afterwards and said, well, it was nothing personal against his performance. I had a lot of attackers on the bench. So I just needed to waste some time, so I need to make another change. But it seemed like when pushed on it, he didn't really feel like he got into the game and, and wasn't that impressed with the performance. Yeah, but I wonder if he reflects back on this, or maybe maybe Duncan Ferguson is not is not fussed, not bothered one iota, or B he could reflect back and say, well, you know, maybe I could have made a different decision uh, that wouldn't have affected the result. It reminded me back of the day when uh, Rude Hullet was the Chelsea manager and he was about to take Scott Minto or left back off after I think twelve or thirteen minutes of a game starting. Not because he was Scotty was bad, because Scotty was rarely bad, but because Rude wanted to change the tactics and Graham Rick talked him out of it. So you can't do that, right? You're going to kill him. You're going to absolutely kill him. You can't do that. And in some sense, I get this feeling here, short of bringing on Stecklenburg, the goalkeeper, for Moise Keane, I really don't see how, much, how else he could have embarrassed him more, particularly for a youngster, particularly for a teenager. To go on at Old Trafford, one of the biggest football theatres in the globe and get, what, 19 minutes and be hauled back off. I, I find it difficult to find a reason for sticking up for the manager making a decision like that. He might say, it's all about results. There's a human element to it as well and that, that 
doesn't sit well with me. It doesn't. Do, do you feel that there's something really bad gone on behind the scenes? Because it obviously did with Marco Silva. He wasn't getting the opportunities. He was being yeah. played out of position. He was disciplined for being late to a team meeting for the Southampton game. Yes. Uh, and now you might have thought that with the change that maybe he had a believer in Duncan Ferguson, but it seems like maybe there's, there's something else going on. Well, I don't know if there's something went on within the period he was in, in the game. You know, and I'm not saying about having a bad touch or, or giving the ball away. Maybe Ferguson saw something else that he wasn't pleased with. But I stick by the fact, short of bringing on the goalkeeper for a player, it, it doesn't really get much more embarrassing than that. So we'll see what kind of stories come out over it. Whether, uh, uh, Duncan Ferguson, to me, I, I don't think is a callous guy. However, it's a pretty callous decision. And we'll see uh, in the coming days if there's anything comes out about it. But it's... Yeah, particularly for a teenager, it doesn't really sit well with me. A good point for them, no doubt about it, but it's kind of muddied it a little bit for that for that young man, however problematic his time has been. Yeah, we'll see how Ferguson uh, deals with that. Of course, Everton got big games against Leicester coming up in the League Cup and then Arsenal in the Premier League as well as the festive period continues. <sighs> Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.